Hello everyone. In uh, today's session, we are going to discuss another example for another scenario-based example in uh, FLA. So here, uh, this is for a pushdown automata construction. Always like when a scenario is given, when it is in pushdown automata, it could be in comparison between two elements or like, like we have stack as a memory unit, right? Sometimes we we'll can push the element into stack, pop it out in an order, and we can have a comparative analysis. Most of the questions will follow the same sequence. So this is one sample example I can see. The college organized a teacher's day celebration event for all its employees. The employees participate in various games of the events. Once a, one such game was to pick the color flowers from the pool, the employee has to pick the flower in a, order, in a specific order. Okay, uh, the one who is picking all the flowers in the specified order at the earliest is the winner, the color flowers all. So it is like picking up the flowers there are four color, color flower like red, green, violet, and yellow. And there are two scenarios that is given. First case is they should uh, pick M number of red flowers. So the case one is red flowers first, and that is M number of red flowers, followed by N number of green flowers, green EN, and then four N number of violet flowers violet 4n and at last 2m number of yellow flowers 2m number of yellow flowers okay so this is the first scenario that is given and the second scenario is they should pick n number of red flowers r par n followed by 3n number of green flowers 3n green flowers so this is your case two now, the first question is, what can be inferred from the PDAs constructed in the given scenario? PDA constructed is deterministic or non-deterministic. Okay, listen carefully. Like, when can we say this is a deterministic or non-deterministic push-down automata? Uh, when you are able to follow or solve this question in a single stretch, like for all possible criteria, when you are able to do it, it's called deterministic one. Now, uh, for the scenario, I can say that like for n number of R, you have three number, like when I have a single R, you have three G's for it. When I have two R's, three more G's will be following. When I want to use a pushdown automator for solving this, we have stack as a memory unit. One thing that can be formed is for each R, we will be expecting three number of G's following. So whenever a, an R is formed, you just insert three extra R for a single R. When you scan a single R, put three R's into stack. And for when you scan a second R, put three other R into stack. And after that, once G comes, go for cancellation. For each G, if there is a matching R, cancel, 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 cancel. At the end of your input, if the stack is empty, we are going to accept it. Okay, so this means that we exactly know when to push the element and when to pop it out back. And similarly, consider this scenario, R and Y has a match. So when you have a single R, one Y, sorry, two Ys, single R, M number of R, two M number of Ys. Another R, you'll have another two Ys. And for all the Gs, you have four Bs waiting for it. Okay, so this is the G scenario. When you have two, another four Bs. So what can be done for each single R, you have like till your R and G, you can have this pushing operation for single R, you just put two, two R's into stack. Okay, for single R, put two, star, two R. And for the next R, push two R's. For a single G, push four V's. Since we have four, uh, sorry, four G's for uh, having the matching pair. And for the next G also, push four G's. Now, after once V comes, we can go for the cancellation. For each V, cancel one. For each Y, cancel R. At the end of your input, if your stack is accepting, your input is accepted. Okay, I'll just tell you the transition function paka in the next, uh, like later the next question and all. Okay, so this is like we can exactly know that when to push an element or when to pop it out. So it means that we can deterministically say that the process of solving this these two problems can be solved deterministically. So we can say that PDA can be constructed for case one and case two deterministically. Okay, so we exactly know when to push the element and when to pop it out. Okay, nothing more.
So with that, you can say that the first question is done. And we have to write the languages for both the cases. So this is the language description. You can write it as L is equal to where n m comma n greater or equal to one. Here also L is equal to n greater or equal to one. So this is your language description. Construct the push down automata for both the cases. Uh, illustrate the diagram. So that is both are same. Okay, construction of push down automata and the diagrammatic representation are both same. And finally, you have an ID description. Now, what we have to do, we have to draw a push down automata for both the cases. So I'll do it case by case. So first I'll take the scenario of first one or uh, second example. It will be uh, somewhat easy to construct. So which follows it like the same rule will be applicable for the next two. Okay, so here I'm going to compare two elements. So for each R, you have three G's following. For each R, you have three G's following. Okay, so you have the state as Q0. One thing is for all the R's that you're going to scan, put it in the stack. So first step is to push the Z0 into stack. So I'll have a self loop here. So without any input, if the stack consists of nothing, you just push Z0 into stack for the first element. And for the next element, what it do? One R from the input will be removed and the topmost element of stack Z0 will be removed. So for R comma Z0, what you're going to do for a single R, we have three G's that is coming into sequence for as a follow. So what can be done? So for this single R, I have three matching G's. So what can be done now? I can push three R's into the stack. So the Z0 that is popped out will be pushed into stack. And for this single R, I'm going to push three R's into stack. This is my first step. So Z three R's Z naught will be the sequence that is there in the stack for the first step. And for the second step, when, when you scan your next input, next input is also R and the topmost element of stack will be R. So that is also popped out. Now what we have to do, R, R. The element that we have popped out from the stack has to be replaced back. Okay, so this R will be replaced back. And for this R, you have to push three more R into stack. Okay, so we are going to push three more R into stack. So this is how you write the transition. This is the toughest place. place. Okay, so once you have defined it properly in Q0 state, the next step will be easy. Okay, so whenever you have G in your input, you are going to have this, going for this cancellation piece. So G in your input, and your stack consists of R for this G, for this, this R will be canceled. For each single G in the input, you are going to cancel one R in the input. So you're not going to push anything into stack. So make it as a self loop for all your G's, your R in the stack will be removed for this G R, for this G R, for this G R, for this G, cancel this, for this G, cancel this R. So each step you're going to pop out, pop out, pop out one R out of it. So at the end of your input, after processing all your input, your stack consists of Z0 alone. So in that case, you can go for Q except state. Q2, that is your final state. Okay, so this is how we construct any push down automata structure. Is that clear? Now we are going to repeat the same for this example. So till your R and N, sorry, R and G, we are going to push the element into stack. So when your R is there, R uh, has to be equated to Y. So for a single R, you'll be having two Y's. So I have to push two R's into stack. And G and V has to be equated. For a single G, we have to push, like we have four V's waiting. So we have to push four G's into stack. So you have this transition as Q0 state in Q0. The first step is without any input, if stack consists of nothing, push Z0 into stack. And next step is, okay, I can do it here. First step, put Z0 into stack. And second step is when I scan an R and your stack consists of Z0, for each single R, you'll have two pairs of Y's matching coming under it, okay? So for this R, you have to push two R's into stack followed by the Z0 that is popped out, okay? So this is the sequence that you're going to put. 
and for the next step so for the single uh, for when you scan the first r put two r's into stack and when you scan the next r your stack will also consist of r again what we have to we have to push those uh, for this r you have to push two r's and the element r that is popped out has to be replaced back okay so this is exactly how the transition look like bit complicated but you have to understand the logic for each single r since it has two matching pairs of y push two r's into stack okay so for all your r's we are going to put two two r's into the stack as it is now when your transition you have for q1 when you have g in your input okay so when you have g in your input and if stack consists of r the topmost limit of stack is r right so at this place what we have to do for a single g you have four v's waiting so what we have to do you have to push four g's into stack followed by the r that is popped out okay for each single g we are going to put four uh, g's into stack so that it has a matching pair when it comes to v so here also i'm going to put a self loop so the next time when you scan another r see for this you will have the most element of all four g's here and for the remaining input your input will be g and stack will be g so for a single g you are going to put 1 2 3 4 g's into stack followed by this g that is popped out of from the stack will be pushed back okay so only pushing operation is bit difficult once you put the element into the sequence like this it is really easy then now we are going to this q2 state for all your g's you'll be you'll be putting that into stack and whenever you have v in your input for this v you have this g as a matching pair in the stack okay so for each v cancel 1 1 g so we'll have a self look here v comma g is epsilon okay so v comma g you just keep on canceling all the elements and once you have uh, y in your input you'll have r in the stack okay so y comma r cancel it go to q3 state so in q3 you make it as a self loop for all your y's you will have a matching pair of r in the stack and finally at the end of your input if stack consists of z not alone go for acceptance state to q4 as the final acceptance state okay so logically if you understand this is the sequence now if you want to uh, show me an example i'll just do it a simple example okay so when i take the input as r g okay followed by 1 2 3 4 v's and two y's okay so first step is q not on scanning the first input as r first step is put the z not and once it scans an r push for a single r push two r's into stack okay now when you have v in your input g in your input g comma r for a single g you have to push 1 2 3 4 g's into stack okay so this will be your stack structure now when once you have an v for each v you will have a for each v you have a matching pair in the stack so pop it out for v and v in the input g in the stack v in the input g in the stack keep on cancelling okay so that is done in this q2 state now y in your input and r in your stack y here r here cancel it y here r here cancel it at the end of your input if stack consists of z not alone go for acceptance criteria okay so this is how you have to draw the transition diagram always remember the scenario here okay so when the scenario is comparison between two or three elements we cannot do for cancellation we cannot uh, update something that when it goes for cancellation step so it is better to make the changes in while pushing the element into stack itself see for single r you will be having two y's so push two r's into stack so that the cancellation will be easy okay so now the next step is what all the questions we have taken this we have written the trans languages constructed uh, both the cases diagrams and all now check whether two consecutive red flowers r r followed by four consecutive green flower can be picked in id using this case one 
Okay, so using case one, you're going to find this um, instantaneous description for this. See, ID is given using instantaneous description. If this is my input, whether I'm allowed to pick this or not. Okay, so now uh, this is a case one transition diagram, right? I'll just remove all the remaining things out of it so that we can draw the transition function. Okay, so now consider my uh, input example is starting from the transition on Q0 state, the input as R, R, G, G, G. 2 R, 1, 2, 3, 4 Gs. And with the starting state, I just put Z0 into stack. So Q0 when the input is R, Q0 when the input is R and stack consists of Z0, push two Rs into stack for a single R here, for a single R, push two R's into stack like this. Okay. We'll stay in Q0 state itself. Again, R comma R. Remove that and push one, two, three, four R into stack. Okay. And it goes on. See, your can transition won't stop. Now, Q0, when the input is G and stack consists of R, G comma R, we are going to this Q1 state by pushing for this single G that is removed here, you are going to put one, two, three, four corresponding G's into stack followed by R in this place. So here, all your inputs are G. So we stay in this Q1 state itself. Okay, so for all your G's, we are going to push four, 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 four G's into stack. So finally, your transition will come like, will stay in this Q1 state itself. After all your input, you'll have plenty of G's followed by four hours in this transition. Okay, so at the end of your input, the transition is, in, is not in final state and the stack is, not all, is also not in empty. Okay, so your input is accepted. At the end of your input, either transition is in final state or your stack is empty. Now, both the cases are not there. So in this case, we say that the input is rejected. Okay, so the transition cannot be performed after the step. There is no possibility of performing any transition after the step. So you're going to stop the process as it is. Okay, so this is how you have to consider an example and proceed on how to solve an example. Like it, it is not always given that for this example, your input has to work. Okay, sometimes they will give an input that doesn't belong to the language too. Right, for this, in this case, the input doesn't belong to the language. So we have to go for a rejection state. So at the end of your input, you have to define it. Write the statement as at the end of your input, the transition is not in final state, the input rejected. At the end of your input, uh, the stack consists of some elements. So it just also says that both the cases are not satisfied, it is rejected. Okay, so that is how we have to conclude it. Thank you.